Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, this time taking a look at the Gitrock Monster, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Some of you might not even know that this card was legal in Historic, was added pretty recently mainly for Brawl, but it also means that we get to play with it in Historic Constructed, which is what we're doing today. Three copies of the Gitrock Monster, 5 mana for a 6-6, a legendary creature Frog Horror with Death Touch, saying at the beginning of our upkeep, sacrifice the Gitrock Monster unless we sacrifice a land. We can also play an additional land on each of our turns to kind of make up for it, and whenever one or more land cards are put into our graveyard from anywhere, we can draw a card. So this last line of text is what we're going to try and leverage the most in this deck, since we have plenty of ways to put a land in the graveyard and draw a lot of cards with the Gidrock monster. A very straightforward synergy is with Fetch Lands, Fabled Passage in this case, which we can sacrifice to search a basic land, and with the Gidrock monster in play also means we get to draw an extra card. And then if we ever get to assemble a Gidrock monster and Crucible Worlds, we can also play land cards from our graveyard. Of course, a Gidrock monster requires that we sacrifice a land each turn, so there will be plenty of lands for us to replay out of the graveyard. But especially once we find a copy of Fabled Passage, we can just replay that twice per turn, of course, thanks to the extra land drop from the Gidrock monster, and to draw two extra cards per turn while getting our basic lands. And once we run out of basic lands, we can still just sacrifice a Fabled Passage just to draw cards if we want to. So the synergy between Crucible, Gidrock Monster and some of our lands is quite powerful. And then taking a look at some other lands that we can easily sacrifice in the deck, we have two copies of Field of Ruin which can destroy opposing non-basic lands, also ends up in the graveyard and draws a card with a Gidrock Monster, and we can also then replay it with our Crucible Worlds to maybe run the opponent out of non-basic lands. We also have two copies of Blast Zone, which is great against some of the more aggressive decks. Can sacrifice it to blow up all cards with a certain converted mana cost that we can kind of adjust based on how many counters we put on it, and then get it back. And then we also have one copy of a Memorial to Folly, which we can sacrifice to return a creature card from our graveyard to our hand. So all those lands work great with the Crucible and the Gitrock monster. So those are just some of the basic synergies in the deck, but there's plenty more to explore. So let's take a look at the entire deck at one mana. We've got the full playset of Arboreal Grazer to give us a little bit of ramp. At first I was playing both Grazer and Llanowar Elves, but felt that I had a little bit too much mana and not enough action. So the eight mana creatures weren't necessary. The reason I'm playing Grazer over Elves is that uh, with the Grazer, of course, if the Grazer dies, we don't really care. We got the benefit from putting the land into play, which means it makes for a great sacrifice fodder for Vraska Golgari Queen, which can plus two, sacrifice a permanent, and then draw a card and gain one. So that works quite nicely with the Grazer. But also the O3 body helps us protect our Planeswalkers quite nicely, since we've got uh, three Vraskas, we've got three Nissas, another six mana Vraska and Liliana. So the O3 body does a good job of protecting our Planeswalkers and forces the opponent to send multiple creatures at each individual Planeswalker to actually take it out. So the Grazer does a nice job there. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Agonizing Remorse, giving us a bit of hand disruption. We are a mid-range deck after all, so having access to some hand disruption is nice. And the Exile can also come in handy, can maybe get something out of the graveyard too in the late game. Then we have two copies of Cast Down as one of our spot removal spells in the deck, destroying a non-legendary creature at instant speed. And then the full playset of Bond of Flourishing, which helps us kind of smooth out our draws, can look at the top three cards of our library for a permanent card and put it into our hand, and we also gain three life. So this can help us find the Gitrock monster if we don't have it already, or maybe a Crucible Worlds and some of our Planeswalkers as well. So the versatility here is quite nice, and of course can also search up a land if we just need to hit our land drops. Then at 3 mana we've already covered Crucible Worlds, which is great. Of course, don't want to draw multiples since the additional effect doesn't do much, even though we could still sacrifice it to Vraska to draw a card. So that's why we're playing 3 and not the full playset, even though it's super synergistic in the deck. And then we also have 3 copies of Dryad of the Elysian Grove, which also lets us play an additional land on each of our turns, so similar to the line of text on the Gidrock Monster. So if we ever get to combine Gidrock Monster with Crucible and Dryad, then our deck really starts going off as we get to play 3 lands per turn, even out of the graveyard, great with uh, Fabled Passage of course. And then lands we control are every basic land type in addition to their other types, which is also a relevant line of text in this deck since we're playing three copies of Nissa, which cares about forests. So this way we get to turn our non-forest cards into forests so they can tap for an additional green mana. And then the 2-4 body is also nice at uh, blocking attacking creatures to protect our planeswalkers. 
Then we've got two copies of E to Extinction as another spot removal spell. This one a bit bigger than Cast Down and a bit more versatile as it can exile a creature or planeswalker. And we also get to essentially surveil one, look at the top card, and decide to keep it on top or put it in the graveyard. And if we happen to put a land in the graveyard with a Gitrock monster in play, we also get to draw a card. And then we've got three copies of Vraska, Golgari Queen, which can uh, do a lot of cool things in this deck. The plus two lets us sacrifice another permanent to draw a card and gain one life, which also works quite nicely if we have the Crucible and the uh, Dryad engines going, since we can just sacrifice our lands, maybe draw some cards with Gitrock Monster, and then just replay those lands right away out of the graveyard. And then the minus three can destroy target non land permanent with convert mana cost three or less, so nice removal spell. And then the ultimate can also be game winning, giving us an emblem that says if any of our creatures deal damage to the opponent, we win the game. And then at five mana, we've got our three copies of Gitrock Monster. It is legendary, so that's why we're not playing the full playset. And the bond can also help us find it. And then we've got three copies of Nissa, who shakes the world. Great card individually, as we all know by now but also pretty synergistic in the deck, as it can turn lands into creatures, and if those creatures die, there are also lands going to the graveyard, which draws a card with the Gitrock monster, and then the extra mana comes in handy once we start drawing a lot of cards. And then we've got two more curve toppers to help us end the game, one Vraska Relic Seeker, which can destroy artifacts, creatures, or enchantments while making a treasure token, which we can maybe sacrifice to a Vraska Golgari Queen to draw an extra card. The plus makes a pirate token, and we can eventually ultimate to essentially win the game. And then one Liliana Dreadhorde General, which can draw a lot of extra cards with the static ability, can make some zombies, and can make each player sacrifice two creatures, which also works nicely with our Arboreal Grazer, and all the tokens we can make with our Planeswalkers. And then looking at our mana base, we've got 27 lands total, since we are playing cards like Arboreal Grazer and Dryad, which want us to have plenty of lands. Of course, don't want to run out of lands with the Gitrock monster, otherwise we're going to be unable to cast any additional spells. So besides the lands we've already covered, the Field of Ruins, the Four Fable Passage, and the Two Blast Zone, and the Memorial, we have four Woodland Cemeteries and four Overgrown Tombs. And then we also want to have plenty of basic lands, so we can keep searching them up with Fabled Passage once we start to assemble the loop with uh, Crucible Worlds. So we have eight forests and two swamps. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. This hand's pretty awkward. Two Grazers with only two lands. Let's take a mulligan. This is better. Get rid of a Crucible. And then I could hold the Passage, I could play it turn one. I think I'm just gonna go Overgrown Tapped here. And then I could always Fable Passage on turn two, depending on the land situation. Alright, we drew the Cemetery. So now I'm tempted to just uh, hold the Passage, since we might be able to play it alongside the Gidrock Monster later. Although with Crucible it doesn't matter as much. So this way if I draw another land, I could play Gitrock and then play Passage afterwards and draw a card right away. Opponent maybe on Elf Tribal. As we see Beast Whisper, pretty scary card. All right, perfect. Holding the passage paid off. And then I guess I'll fetch now, since if I draw another land, I still get to play it thanks to the extra land drop from Dryad. And then next turn we get to go off with uh, Crucible Worlds. The elf deck usually doesn't have much removal, but they can definitely go wide. Elvish Clan Caller pumping the team. But no good attacks. Alright, so get to untap. Doesn't really matter what I sacrifice. Blast Zone could be pretty key here too. Nissa. Alright, so let's do some cool things. I guess with the Dryad in play it doesn't matter how I tap my mana, since each land I control is a forest. But I, I guess it's good practice. Play Crucible. 
Replay Passage. Get a lance, draw cards. Get a lance, draw a card. And play Vraska. And get rid of the clan caller before they get more copies. And I guess I can attack. Eh, maybe it's a little greedy. Yeah, let's just pass. I'm fine if they were to trade off their entire board for the Gitterrock monster, but that leaves their Planeswalkers a little bit exposed. And Vraska's pretty nice here with Crucible in play. Blast Zone in play can deal with all these Lander Elves if I want to. Could also put counters on the Blast Zone. And then uh, untap it with Nissa to then sacrifice it to deal with the Beast Whisperer. Although then I would also lose Vraska. So we've got a ton of options here. Let's just start with uh, Bonds. I guess I'll take a Grazer. Maybe I should have started with Fetching with Fabled Passage to thin out the deck of lands before going for Bonds to increase her chances of finding actual spells. Another Bonds. Probably gonna have a look with Remorse here before we proceed. Ley Lines, Vivians. Probably want to Vivian. And then I think I'll just blow up the Lenorolves. Cast Town can deal with the Beast Whisper, and they might concede to this. But our turn is far from over. Alright, so let's go with Bonds, I guess try it first. Play an extra lands. Gotta be careful that we don't deck ourselves. Drawing so many cards. Play another Dryads. Play Blast Zone out of the graveyard again. Put a counter on it. And then I can untap it with Nissa. The plus one counters and the blast counters are different. Sacrifice this. And then uh, I guess I can still plus this one too. All right, that was a pretty good turn. Got a discard to hand size. Also, if we discard lands, when discarding to hand size, it also triggers a Gidrock monster, and then you draw a card, and you're prompted once again to discard to hand size, which is an interaction that doesn't come up very often. But yeah, opponents. Pretty much locked out of the game with Blast Zone coming back from the graveyard each turn. Alright, can we kill them right now? Should be able to. Sacrifice for one. Deals with Elf. And then we've got two more removal spells in hand. Still plenty of cards left in library. 
I guess if I kill the Thorn Lieutenant... Alright, opponent has seen enough, GG's. Yeah, if I target the Thorn Lieutenant, I guess they would get one more token from the ability. But I guess we had another cast down and Eto Extinction. And plenty of mana thanks to Nissa. Well, that was uh, quite a beating. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty solid hand. Hopefully Bond can find the Gitrog monster at some point. Fraska's not bad, so I guess I'm still happy just finding a land here. Probably could have uh, cast Bond first in case I found an Overgrown Tomb. Crucible would be great if we had a Fable Passage, but we don't. Two life probably doesn't matter too much if we're up against the control deck. Mindstone, all right, maybe an artifact synergy deck. We'll just play Vraska and Sag the Grazer. Since I want to hit my land drops for monster, could deal with the Mindstone later too if I want to minus Vraska. Doesn't seem like a priority. Guild Globe, maybe some sort of Dance of Demands deck. Or maybe a Flood of Tears combo deck. Well, I can play the Gidrog. So do I minus a Mind Stone? Do I sack a land to draw a card? I think I still plus here. Alright, so next turn they could potentially cast a Flood of Tears, so then I might want to kill the Mind Stone. But getting Vraska up to ultimate also could be relevance. Karn the Great Creator, alright. What does it get? Salvager of Ruin. Alright, so there's some sort of combo going on here. I'll probably get rid of the cemetery. Forts are good for Nyssa. Well, we've got some options. Actually, a little bit short of mana to do everything I want to. Now is probably a good time to get rid of the Mind Stone. Can just attack Karn. Take it from there. And then hopefully we can find a Crucible or a Fabled Passage. So my opponent might be playing Tazeret as well, which combos nicely with Karn the Great Creator and all these artifacts. Maybe a Bolas of Citadel. Alright, so now I could play a 6-drop. Kill a map. Kill another map. Could also plus to sack the treasure to draw a card. Just want to limit the amount of things they can do next turn. There's Tesserats. Probably put a stop on upkeep so I can eat to extinction. And then sacrifice the land that I tapped for mana to pay for the eats. Although attacking with Dryad is also fine here. And land in the graveyard means I get to draw a card with a Gidrock monster from that as well. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat a Tesseret artifact deck. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw. Fine opening hands. No real ramp, so it could be a little bit slow. Facing a dinosaur deck. Yeah, turn two Marauding Raptors, pretty scary. Hmm, I might be better off playing the Tomb Tapped. So I don't have to pay the life to cast Bond next turn. And I might find room for a Tap Memorial later. Grazer's nice. Shifting Ceratops. Are we gonna do better than preventing 4 damage? Probably. Would love to get the Gidrock monster, but I just need the lands here. And at least we get to shuffle the Gidrock back. Can maybe find it with the second uh, Bond of Flourishing. There we go. And the Gidrock will do a good job of blocking these dinos. Hopefully no Savage Stomps in our future. Or Domri's Ambush. I think we're jumping now. No land to give Trample. And next turn I can play the Crucible with the Fable Passage in the Graveyard, that's going to be great. Alright, looks like we might be safe this turn. Galta's going to be scary though. Can definitely go over the top of the Gidrog monster here. And dry it, all right. So play Crucible. Well, we haven't drawn a ton of action there, but uh, we're all set up for next turn. Ooh, Regisaur for a hasty Galta. They could even consider an attack with everyone here. Just a Marauding Raptor. Well, not sure what I need to draw here at this point. Blast Zone plus Nyssa could maybe take out all the four mana cards, which is a start. But they would still have the Regisaur and the Hasty Galta. I think I take it. All my lands are forests thanks to the Dryads, so it doesn't really matter which one I sacrifice here. Alright, should have at least one basic left somewhere in the deck. Got a second one too. Then now to dank as much as possible. And 
And then what's next? Nissa can give me a ton of mana to work with, so that's not a bad place to start. Can play a Dryad, which gives me an extra land drop for the Fabled Passage too, although there's no lands I can get with it. Maybe start with the Bonds. Vraska Golgari Queen does something. Is it better than Grazer? I think I'd take the Grazer actually. Once lots of cheap bodies we can put in play. Alright, next up. Probably play Dryads. And I need to get more cards flowing. So I might have to just sag the passage without getting a basic just to draw a card. Which is a bit of a shame since we happen to draw so many basics along the way. Crucible doesn't do much. So yeah, what do I want to draw here? A Remorse. Eto Extinction, Cast Down, doesn't deal with Galta but can deal with the uh, Haste Dinosaur. So we've got some outs here. Alright, there's the Eto Extinction. So I can play the Grazer with the floating mana. And then untap a lands, and both lands will make two mana thanks to the Dryad and Nissa here. And then I can eat to extinction at instant speed. Can discard some lands to hand size, which will also draw me cards with the Gitrog monster, and then I'll have to discard to hand size again. And then I'll discard the Crucible. So there's Hasty Galta. Can block with the forest and then still E to extinction. So all going face. Alright, which blocks make the most sense? These can gain trample, can't forget that. Three on three. Two there. And then I'm okay sacrificing a dry to prevent some damage. Could also kill the Registaur instead, which is pretty scary too. Now nah, this seems fine. Put that in a graveyard, draw a card. So we're at 10. Land going to the graveyard from Nissa also draws a card. Still 25 cards left, so not too close to decking. Alright, 10's game. Need to find some of our 6 mana planeswalkers here to take over. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna use Fabled Passage again to draw some more cards. Wish we had more basics in the deck now. Remorse doesn't do it now. Cast sounds good. Alright. So we'll play Vraska. Can take out the Huntmaster or the token. 
If I take out Huntmaster and the Registrar, I take out all the Haste Givers, which seems important here. Play some lands out of the graveyards. Play some grazers as blockers. And then still get to use Nissa. And hit for three. And then I don't need to use cast down on the register right now. We've got infinite mana. Just in case something scarier shows up. If they play Galta, I can just cast down the register in response. And end of turn I can add some counters to the blast zone. Three counters puts it to four, so I can deal with the Ceratops and the Ripjaw Raptor. And then I can keep getting back my Blast Zone from the graveyard as well. More cast downs are good. Alright, so let's uh, use Vraska. Can probably afford to sack a Grazer now. And then we'll blow up the Blast Zone, see what we draw. We will lose Vraska, but that's fine. And then... Play some lands out of the graveyards. Including Blast Zone. And I guess we'll get rid of this Registaur so we can start attacking. Let's see, can I kill them? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I think we can. Cast down the token, play another Nyssa, animate an extra land. And that should do it. Alright, sweet. That was a close game. Needed every last card there to find an answer for Galta. But uh, once we did, we managed to stabilize nicely. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with... Uh, Reasonable opening hands. Bond can hopefully find land 3. Fable Passage would be ideal with the Crucible and the uh, Gitrog Monster. Turn 1 Knight of Evil Legion. Second Crucible we can maybe sacrifice to Vraska later. Definitely need a land. Field of Ruin plus Crucible could also come up. Maybe get rid of a Castle Lochthwain. Night Pumps. So Vraska minus works out quite well here. Could also Remorse to have a look. But uh, this seems like a fine exchange. And next turn I could also sacrifice a land and then replay it with the Crucible, if Vraska's still in play. Right, Vraska down, but took my opponent's entire turn. Alright, so Mono Black Control here, I guess we can call it. Lots of removal, lots of expensive Planeswalkers. Phyrexian Arena is kind of the scarier card here that draws some cards immediately. Although I could also take one of the Planeswalker removal spells, so my Nissa and Vraska get to live. They have multiple answers for Gitrog Monster. I think we're setting up for a long game, and I don't think I want to play a game where they have Arena in play for a while. Alright. 
Blast Zone deals with the Knights. I don't think I want to attack, because then a double block for them is pretty straightforward. Now if they contempt the land, it gets exiled, and I wouldn't be able to get it back with Crucible, but they're gonna contempt Nissa, which makes sense. Alright, time to play Vraska. Then they're gonna use a Murder Strider, but then I'll have Gitrock Monster to hopefully take over. Although the question here is what to do with Vraska. If I minus, then they can just pump the knight and kill Vraska. If I kill the knight, I guess the murder Rider doesn't finish off Vraska. So that might be the best. Although the blast zone does deal with the knight pretty cleanly. I guess I can just make a pirate. Which also shields me from Liliana eventually. And I'll happily block the Knight of a Legion if they want to attack with it. Vraska down. So I can play Gitrog Monster. And then play my lands. No lands in the graveyard, sadly. So I wouldn't be able to really sacrifice anything here of value. Hopefully they're out of creature removal. Suppose a pirate could attack, but again, I don't really want to trade for their knights when we have Blast Zone. Put a stop on upkeep to use Blast Zone, so I can maybe sag the lands that I tapped for mana. And Dread Presence, that's fine. So we should be able to untap with our monster, which is what matters. They do have a land, so next turn they could play an Ugin. In fact, they kill the pirates to set up for Liliana Minus. I'm gonna blast zone here. Backup Gitrog is nice. And then we'll sign the Field of Ruin. Can play those both out of the graveyard, thanks to Gitrog and Crucible. Should maybe bond in case I find a fetch land. So Gitrog and Field of Rune can both attack. And then I'll play Dryad into Field of Ruin. And we've got the backup Gidrock Monster in case a Ugin minus. There's land 6, Field of Ruin can deal with Castle. So that's gonna go after the monster. So untap, take our draw step. Can send both at Ugin. And then I can go Gitrog. Sag the Field of Ruin that's not a creature. On the castle. Although that does give them a swamp with Dread Presence in play, which is not the best, but I think I'm happy enough doing this. Play Grazer and empty out our hand here.
All right, opponent's got a lot of cards in hand, but we've got our Crucible engine running. Tendrils of Corruption for seven, killing the Gitrock monster. Yeah, that's a problem. We lost our draw engine now. Take a draw step. Vraska can still draw some cards here at least. Probably sacking lands that we can return with the Crucible anyway. And I can load up some counters on the blast zone end of turn. A ritual of Suits. Explains the chump with the murderous rider. But we do have Blast Zone plus Crucible, so we can keep uh, destroying their permanents here. Just a flesh wound. Everyone is expendable. Cast Town can finally deal with the presence. And then I can tick up the Blast Zone to 6 to deal with Liliana. And I'll take up this other one to two. And this was nice. Now that we lost the dried, we actually have to tap our mana. Put a counter on the blast zone. I guess I could have put the counter on the blast zone end of turn here. Didn't need the floating mana. Although the grazer should block the zombie just fine. Another castle we can field of ruin. We'll start by sacrificing a land. Don't really need to fill the Vruna Castle right now. The land shall come for you. Sun of Forests. Chump may be indicating not a ritual of suit incoming. But yeah, they need to deal with both of my Planeswalkers, which are close to ultimating. The damage from Dread Presence will stem the bleeding. 
castle at the cost of three life. Although if they have more tendrils, they can offset that life uh, nicely. Frax in arena, fair enough. Do have a blasted on three, which can deal with it right away. So I can sack this one and put three counters on this one. Although I don't want to blow up my own Vraska. Crucible, we have backups, so that's fine. So this one I'll put three counters onto. And this other one I can blow up right now, I think. And do I want to feel the Ruin the Castle too? It does give them an extra Dread Present trigger and I might be able to find removal for it. Eh, not the best set of draws. Replay the Blast Zone. Arabos' intervention, taking out a land, sure. So I don't really want to use Blast Zone, since then I end up losing my Vraska as well. And I don't want to use Field of Ruin on Castle, because then I give them an extra Dread Presence trigger. So I think I just pass. We have two Planeswalkers about to ultimate, and they both need to be dealt with. Alright, that's step one, I guess. So I'll put a few extra counters on this Blast Zone. Still don't think I blow up Blast Zone on Red Presence, since at the moment they might only be able to deal with one Planeswalker that's about to ultimate. So I'll put uh, one Blast Zone... Let's do five. In case they draw another Ugin or Liliana. And see which Planeswalker they go after. Goes after Vraska. Let's cast this bond, see what we can find. Liliana's nice. Second Liliana, minus. <laughs> My army will envelop this world. I do love a good death whale. And then now I wanna field of ruin if possible. And then I can still plus my Vraska if I want to. Don't dwell on what's about to happen. All right, that was uh, quite the grind fest. Let's see if we got there or if they have some crazy comeback. One card remaining. A Liliana Dreadhor General. It's not gonna cut it. Makes a zombie. Opponents at 8, so I think the safest way to do this is plus Liliana. 
them. Sack the blast zone on six, so they don't draw any cards when I kill their zombie. And then minus Vraska. In case I drew an instant speed removal spell, and I made a land with Nissa, attack for eight exactly. Wow, what a game. Quite a grind fest, but uh, yeah, it goes to show the power of the Gidrock monster in Historic. Want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.